and welcome once again to our weekly Cree hymn sing coming to you from Church of the Messiah, a Pasquiat Cree nation. We have uh, our extra guests and singers with us today, so we are always welcoming of our organist Ken Lathlin. And today we have Mike and Harry and Baldy joining us, so we encourage you all to sing along as we begin for this Sunday, July 26th. We'll pray together the opening prayer. Creator, we give you thanks for all you are and all you bring to us for our visit within your creation. In Jesus, you place the gospel in the center of this sacred circle through which all creation is related. You show us the way to live a generous and compassionate life. Give us your strength to live together with respect and commitment as we grow in your spirit, for you are God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll begin together by singing number 98. join in singing number 101.
In the Gospel reading that Mike read from Matthew, we saw five different parables that Jesus used for his teaching. I'm not going to preach a sermon, I just want to say a couple of things about parables. Now, parables weren't unique to Jesus' way of teaching. In fact, many teachers, ancient and modern, use parables or stories to tell us something about the world around us. Parables are simply stories that open up our imagination and allow us to creatively think about the world around us. What is unique to Jesus' use of parables is that he is always using parables to teach us something about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom that he himself is announcing as he goes through out Galilee and Judea into Jerusalem teaching and preaching. Now, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the parables that Jesus will tell usually fall into one of three categories, and they all teach us something about the kingdom of God. The first is the kingdom of God is surprising or unexpected. Many of Jesus' parables take on this tone where something happens in the parable that is completely unexpected or it's surprising, something that was hidden is revealed. So a couple of our parables today would fall into that category. The second category of teaching is that God's kingdom is upside down. In other words, the kingdom of God doesn't look like the kingdoms and the empires of the earth. In the kingdom of God, if you want to be powerful and strong and a leader, 
He must first become a servant, as Jesus did when he modeled that kind of leadership in going to the cross. The upside-down kingdom values of the kingdom of God are in direct contrast to the strong and mighty empires of the world. In other words, God doesn't do things the way the kings of the earth do things. The third category of parables about teachings of the kingdom of God give us a sense that the kingdom of God requires us to do something. In other words, when we hear these parables, we have a choice on how to respond and ultimately who to give our loyalty or allegiance to. So these three categories, the kingdom of God is surprising and unexpected, the kingdom of God is upside down in its values compared to the world, and the kingdom of God requires some kind of decision or choice, encompass all the teachings in Jesus' parables. Now parables aren't just a little moral story that Jesus taught, they actually require a response from us. Parables that Jesus used are teachings and stories that both reveal something about God and are able to prompt us to imagine the kingdom of God being something beyond what we have already experienced. Jesus told parables to open up our imaginations and to get us to think big about the kingdom of God. So, I encourage you to go back into Matthew, reread some of these parables, and find out and see for yourself what parts of these parables are surprising or unexpected. What parts of these parables speak to values of the kingdom of God that are unlike the values of the kingdoms of this world? And what parts of these parables require you to make a decision on who you give your allegiance to? When Jesus taught in parables, he was asking us to dig deeper into the truths of the kingdom of God and respond with joy, with confidence, and with decision, giving our entire allegiance to Christ, our King. Next, we will sing number 141.
will be number 112. Right. 
thank you for joining us once again for our weekly Cree hymn sing. As you go through this week of beautiful summer weather, may you feel the presence of Jesus Christ of Nazareth near with your family, in your homes, and as you go about on the land. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and go with you always. Amen.